Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome to the family room. Ooh, almost knocked my phone <laughs> off. Welcome to the family room. Welcome back to another Wonderful Wednesday on the family room. I have my most awesome wife, Kelsey, here with me on the couch tonight. Hashtag Kelsey on the couch. Uh, we missed you guys last week. We were all uh, on vacation, but we are glad to be... I just noticed all the comments. We are glad to be back. I was actually I was just looking on the YouTube before, uh, before we got going, and the very first family room that we did was 10 months ago, so we are coming up on the one-year anniversary of The Family Room. Uh, let us know where you're watching from, and before we get started, uh, we'll go over the announcements really quick. Do you want to do any of them, or do you want me to get some? Tag team them. Um, you can do Junes. Junes? I'll do Junes. <laughs> uh, the Beast Feast is this Friday, June 22nd in 2024, if you're watching this in 2030. It's already happened. Uh, that is this Saturday <laughs> This Saturday at 5 p.m. till about 7 p.m. Uh, that's on our website. All of these events, again, familychurch.social slash events. That's how you can find all of the uh, events that we bring up here. But the Beast Feast, that's for just the men. You can find all the information from, for that on our website. We have the Youth Water Day coming up. If you remember, or if you don't remember, I'm going to tell you, that the youth are not meeting um, every week as they were normally. Um, during the summer, we are going to be doing once a month. And uh, this, this one coming up is June 25th. That's from 6 to 8 p.m. That is a water day. I'm kind of looking forward to that. That's going to be fun. And youth is 12 to 18 years old. 12 not to 18. Not your five-year-old. Yeah. Not your 10-year-old. This is for the youth. Not your five-year-old, because apparently if you think a five-year-old is a youth, I'm, I got to say Just covering it. all the bases. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> the Art of Marriage course is next uh, Friday and Saturday, right? Yeah, yeah. the 28th. The 28th and the 29th. Uh, that's, there's two different times. The 28th is 5.30 p.m. and the 29th is 10.30, 10.30 a.m., um, you need to register for that. It is on our website. Again, familychurch.social. Take it away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there, she's going to do the rest of the um, announcements. I just wanted to throw you off. <laughs> okay. So uh, July 7th will be our food truck. And so far, it's the Casey's Hot Dogs again. Ooh. And I think it's going to be the Popsicles. I did not get a popsicle last time, but the hot the, the hot dogs the hot dogs I do remember, and they were phenomenal. Yes, and then there's no women's fellowship for July and August. Perfect. I know you were. Uh, I was so upset. To that. I was looking forward to um, that. Uh, July 28th is our team meeting, and then at some point in July will be a, another youth night. Um, we're kind of working on that right now. I think it may be a Nerf gun war. Mm -hmm. We are talking um, to Miss Candy about possibly going to World Golf Gymnastics and using their obstacle course and everything for the youth. Um, oh, that'd be cool. So August the 4th, we'll have another food truck. We do have a couple events in August. I know that's in a couple months, but I was pretty excited. We finally scheduled um, Life South, the blood drive truck to come August 11th after church. So, um, I'm going to do that. That'll You're be gonna good. You're going to do it? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the Voyager Kids Back to School Bash on August 10th. And Golly. that is kind of a special thing. We wanted to do something for the kids come, going back to school. But we felt like doing the backpack thing again may not be our best option because... A lot of kids like to pick their backpack. They like to, you know, some schools, you have to do certain amount of supplies. So we were thinking more of giving kind of a parents a night out. If you're a teacher, this gives you time to set up your classroom. Yes. Um, I that think that's will be, a better idea. Yeah. And that's going to be kind of a water day as well. Um, that'll be August 10th from 4 to 7 p.m. And then the youth group will be starting back up weekly. And we're going to do kind of a big thing for them on the 13th. Perfect. 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 So... 
Tonight we are here to discuss the Father Days, Father's Father Days, Father's Day sermon from this previous Sunday, which is funny oh, because and softball. Yes. Oh, yeah. The softball. We're we're going to be starting up a um, softball group thing. Um, this is all on our website, and also the the grief sharing. Mm. Um, we're still working out the details in that, but that's starting up um, a grief sharing group. Uh, I looked at the curriculum today with Dad. It actually looks really good. Um, so I think that'll be a really good thing for for anybody that's suffered some type of loss or grieving, and you're looking for. Um, you know, people to, it sounds weird, but sharing your grief, looking for support and other people like that. Um, and that's going to be online based. I know that there's some people that they do like doing everything in the building. Unfortunately, with, you know, all the different kinds of groups, we can't open up the building for literally everything because there's just not enough room. The other side of that is going to an online platform allows you to uh, reach a lot more people. We have a lot of people that um, are part of this church, but they're not in the state of Florida or they're not in the, the city of St. Augustine. So this helps them still be able to connect. I know there was somebody that commented they were in South Carolina, I think it was mm -hmm. when you said earlier. So there's that. But yeah, today, the uh, the, the, the Father's Day stuff. And um, the last time that we were on the on this together was Mother's Day. So apparently it's just a tradition that uh, on Mother's Day and Father's Day, we're going to get there. And yes, I see that 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 comment, Philip. Uh, <laughs> the new sound stuff is coming tomorrow. If you haven't heard us mention it, I'm I am super excited. We're working with Church Front. Um, you can look them up on YouTube. Really great guys. We're doing a whole bunch of new sound upgrades. So this will be the last time that it sounds like this Sunday when you watch live stream um, or watch the archive or the archived live stream under the, the live tab on YouTube, all of the sound will be significantly improved. Um, we're really excited about this. It's giving us a lot more um, options, cleaning up the rooms, cleaning up the buildings. Um, and all of that is possible because of the faithful giving of everybody that gives and supports this, the church and the ministry. Um, you know, we're, we're super grateful. It always goes to something. It doesn't just go to, you know, only paying bills or things like that. We have the, the Acts 29 and the, the dining with dignity and the food pantry as well. Um, so, and now we're able to bring our, uh, 20 year old or more, um, equipment up to date. Uh, the second phase of that is the camera upgrades. So if you want to give towards that, that's available on our website, but yeah, this um, the the I think it was a word to men was the name of the sermon he preached out of Ephesians six verses one through four, and uh, I think it was a, a good message, an important message. Um, I know it's kind of hard with 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 summer and the summer schedules. Church attendance always kind of fluctuates because everybody's traveling and all that, and then you know there's a lot of um, dads that are disconnected. So if you haven't heard it, or if you know somebody that's a father, or even just a male that needs to hear this message, um, it's available, available on our YouTube. I think it was a great, a great word. Um, and you know, he, I want to open up with the slides that he brought up. He, he told the story of how he, uh, used the Google machine, as he calls it, and he searched in... Uh, well, he's men's... also 72. <laughs> he searched men's roles in society, and the, uh, the AI answer that came up said that men have traditionally been taught to be protectors, fighters, breadwinners, and defenders, and have been considered essential for the survival of half of the human species, which is funny because... I don't know how you only get half of the species. And, you know, he made the joke that, you know, it kind of takes both parties to get that involved. But uh, it really makes no sense that it's only half of the species. Uh, but it, it goes on to say, however, masculinity is a complex concept that can be reinterpreted in modern society. This shift in traditional masculinity can help people reevaluate what it means to be a man today. And about this point is when he said that his hackles started to rise. I was going to say it. Oh, go ahead. Hackles. Hackles. <laughs> hackles. That's a, that's a, weird, um, a weird word. But uh, it, it went on to say that today men can take on more nurturing roles such as becoming empathetic leaders and emotionally expressive fathers. And while, and he also made a... <clears throat> 
six sticks. Sorry to hear that you have step, strep throat. But um, while, uh, while that doesn't necessarily sound like a bad thing, because it's okay for fathers to be nurturing and uh, empathetic and emotionally expressive instead of just burying everything. The problem that has come up today is that we have taken empathy and emotions to the extreme, and now we are just uh, responding, and we're not leading the households anymore. There's men that have, um, you know, you, you look at society as a whole, and it's just there's this big shift and a big push with... Um, just like television and, and social media and just the feminization of men where now that's, it, it's just gone off the deep end instead of being, you know, uh, empathetic and emotionally supportive or in touch with your emotions. Now it's like, that's all that they are. And if, if you show any type of masculinity, uh, you know, it's just toxic masculinity. Now, anytime there's some sort of manly man of any capacity, it gets completely mislabeled toxic masculinity. And I think, um, I, I don't know, to me, there's just a really big problem um, with society today that with just that push, it's, it, it's like, you know, they're, 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 they're pushing the men to, um, to be silent and men to not be men and men to, you know, now be women and, you know, compete, if you want to call it that, in women's sports. And, um, you know, one of the things he said, if, if men are not men, we don't have a, s- a sustainable society. Um, and you're kind of a history buff. Are you, you can jump in at any point. <laughs> I don't know why I'm want. here. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither now. Uh, the, my, so Ouch. <laughs> if, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um. If you guys have a favorite quote, I know he always says this. If you have a favorite quote or something from Sunday, drop that in the comments and we'll jump off of it. Hackles. Whatever. But um, when he said that, uh, how if men are not men, we don't have a sustainable society. And if women are not women, we don't have a sustainable culture. culture, And it will all unravel. I immediately thought of Rome. Uh, I I don't know exactly what it is, but I do remember reading somewhere that the fall of Rome happened um, kind of, I don't want to say this is like the fall of America because I don't believe that. There is a problem, but the fall of Rome, as I remember reading, and hopefully it's not incorrect, was that it actually started taking place after society started doing much of the same stuff to men that they're doing to men now, where they started um, having that, that uh, the homosexual agenda where, you know, pushing men to be ultra feminine and go after other men instead of going after other women. And, you know, that goes with the, the, the quote about, you know, um, hard times make hard men. And then the hard men make, uh, you know, easier times. And then the easier times make weak men and weak men make hard times. And it's just this cycle. And I think that's a good thing that, you know, I know he's, he's talking about something else, but finding the balance, but we have to find the balance for men of, we can't just all be, you know, completely one side of the board. You can't have this ultra hard man that, you know, doesn't show any emotion, doesn't uh, help anybody out, doesn't want to do anything except except fight and just be a, a roaring rage of testosterone. But then you can't have the other side where it's completely feminine uh, and they don't know how to, and I'm not saying women don't know how to do this, but just an example, like changing a tire or changing your oil in the car, just something simple that traditionally you would have thought a man would do, like a a, a manly thing, like, you know, just, I don't want to sound rude, but like, you know, like the old school, just traditional kind of household thing where women would, you know, clean or something like that. And men would be responsible for mowing the lawn or taking care of the cars. And I know that there's been a shift where, uh, in society, you know, women are able, not able, but they're more independent now to do those kinds of things. And they're, I know you like mowing the lawn and I have to like arm wrestle you for it just to get out there. Cause I hate doing anything else. I do like mowing the lawn, but there's just that thing where there's that huge shift now to take men just completely out of the picture. You good? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm just jumping in. I'm waiting for you to for you know I'm just come in here with on me. You. What do you think? What are your thoughts on on men in society now as a thirty thousand foot kind of view? Um I don't think you want to know my thoughts on it. <laughs> <laughs> um 
I I guess things if you want to look back to the 50s and it's you know or before that um you know it was a obviously it wasn't around um you know your dad was like graduating college in the 50s or something like that <laughs> um but it was i wouldn't say it would be the most healthy it wasn't the most healthy environment um because, but it was necessary for the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, I don't think it was the most healthy, you know, not allowing, and obviously I'm not talking about the fifties, but you know, prior to that, you know, women really didn't have a say in anything and, um, you weren't allowed to basically do anything but work from the home. Um, and you know, nowadays with how society is, you have to, uh, <laughs> uh, nowadays with society, how it is, you are almost, you have to have both, you have to have both man and woman work mm-hmm. in order to just financially support. I mean, unless you, you know, hit the lottery or something. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, so yeah. You, that's a good point. You have to, you guys have to both work. And so with that shift with how society is, um, you get stuck, and I think we've talked about this on Mother's Day, but you get stuck to where the man wants to get up in the morning, go to work, come home, and not help at all and say, well, I worked all day. But nowadays, it's the woman did too, whether it's a work-from-home job or it's a part-time job, you know, so she worked as well. So then when, at what point do you say, okay, this is only a household chore for, you know, you guys are both using the dishes and I'm not trying to sound like a super feminist cause I'm not, but you guys are both using the dishes. If you guys are both getting up and going to work, you guys are both coming home. Um, you guys are both eating dinner. You know, we, I think we have a good system and I, I used us last time as an example, but you know, we're both working. Um, we kind of have gotten into our own household chores that we just automatically do to help each other out. Um, I do all the cooking, you do all the cleanup. And then, you know, you take care of folding most laundry. I do, you know, cleaning the house, doing the little stuff like that. Um, and like you said, we fight over the lawn work. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's, you can have that type of, relationship I think and still follow the biblical backbone of a man and a woman because you can still still share the load of the home but he can still be the provider he can still be the protector she can still be the nurturer she can still um you can still have that backbone there without compromising that you guys can still help out and a lot of people will use a lot of people use what they say in the Bible and say, well, I don't need to do the dishes. I don't need to do the laundry. She's supposed to be my helper. She's supposed to do all of this. I don't need to do it. And they'll take it super, super literal. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the day, you're not going to have a wife because she's about tired of cleaning up after you <laughs> and picking up your Budweiser cans. You know, it's, I think that you can still have that and you can, Bottom line is if men would just actually read the Bible, you wouldn't have to worry about being too emotional but strong, or you wouldn't have to worry about doing this but not being too much of that. If you just read it, you literally wouldn't have to worry about being too much this way or too much that way. I think that's a, that's a good point. Um, and yeah, that's definitely something that I think everybody needs more of is, is reading the Bible and applying it. Um, cause now it's like, you know, men... I mean, it literally tells you even just how to love your wife. I oh mean, yeah. I don't know well, if that's they read, the thing. What song of songs. If you've literally read that, <laughs> like it's telling you it's right crusty. there. Yeah. That's some crazy stuff. So that's not for the family room. No. <laughs> um, but no, you're, that you're right because <laughs> they take the, they take the, the, you know, the, the, the verse, you know, wives submit to your husbands and then they want to run with that, but they don't realize the other aspect of it of, you know, husbands, you're supposed to love your wives as Christ loved the church. 
So they want their wives just to submit to them and do everything. And, you know, they'll go to work and they're the provider or the sole provider or whatever. And nowadays that's, that's probably few and far between to only be the sole provider. And like that, they don't realize, um, you know, like, just okay, so like the 50s, they don't realize. So, you know, back then, like, the men were traditionally the ones working and then women were out doing all the home stuff. And now it's just with the way that uh, the economy and everything is, you have to have both people working just to survive. And so, and, and, and if you're lucky enough to have um, a stay-at-home wife or a stay-at-home mom, you've got, okay, yeah, you're going and you're busting your butt at work all day, but then when she's you come home, she's been home. busting her home, busting, busting her, her butt home. at home uh, all day as well. Mm-hmm. And you come I home. Mean, if anyone's been around kids for more exactly, than two hours. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Like the kids, like she needs a break and okay, yeah. like maybe you need a minute to unwind, you know, coming from, cause I remember, you know, coming home from the long days of work and sometimes you're just like, I need a minute to just like decompress from that. But then you also need a minute to <coughs> decompress from the kids and all the other stuff that, you know, coming, coming from work and coming home, yeah. you don't know, what your wife has been going through and she don't know what you've been going through. So a really healthy thing would be, you know, just like, Hey, you know, I just need a second. Let me, you know, just like decompress for a minute and then I'll take the kids out and do whatever. But I think there's just, you know, people will get in fights just from a complete lack of communication and they expect each other person to be doing something. And then, you know, you get that turmoil because it's like, the wife is expecting the husband to come home and do this and this and this, and he's expecting this to get done. And it's just, there shouldn't be expectations like that. With us is don't ever um, downplay, uh, downplay their job. And that could Mm -hmm. be being a stay at home mom. Don't downplay like as a, as a father, don't come home and say, well, we only have one child and it's an eight month old. I mean, have you been around an eight month old? They're psycho. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and it's and it and it's not just you know Riley's six and she still just won't you know mm-hmm. go play. She's constantly yeah. attached to you. So, um, you know, don't downplay how hard their day was. You know, it's like with nursing, pain is what the patient says it is. So, in a relationship, their feeling is what it says it what they say it is. You know what I mean? Well, it's like. Uh- you and I, we, you know, we both have those different personalities and I'm like the robot where you can be having anxiety about something and, and worrying about something. And you ask me and I'm just like, Oh yeah, whatever. It's just do that. And then it's, but you're like, no, well, like, and I'm just like, no, oh, like, like last night, that's the thing. Oh, like, like last we're night. just done. Like that's yeah. Like, you know, I don't just, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can, you did. No. Oh, I know. Yes, I remember that, but I didn't mean it in that way. You, but, did, you said, don't think about it, but I didn't mean it. Like, don't think about it. Well, you know what I mean. No, you, know you me said enough. don't think about well, it. I don't mean like just <laughs> throw it out of your mind. I mean like it's not – I don't mean it um, – so that's, that's a good example. I don't mean – it's like, you know, okay, so someone's like if they have asthma and you're like, oh, just breathe. I don't mean it like that. It's not – I'm not saying, you know, oh, don't think about it because obviously so y'all wanted to you know can't what I thought just about men. throw Let something me out of your head. <laughs> You have to find, like you said before I preached the sermon on anxiety, you have to find something to replace it with. So it's like, okay, if you're going to take... A, yeah, so that's why don't think about it wasn't a good response. <laughs> well, there's more to me. Uh, you know, why use a lot of word when small word do the trick or whatever the thing was from the office? I don't use then a lot say, of words to do stuff. You think about something else. <laughs> well, that's... A, okay, well, in my head, it's coming from about that. about fight? Um, Oh, I forgot the other point I was wanting to make, anyway, but dads. I think, yeah, the, well, the dads. And so, um, so yeah, now you have those two different roles where, you know, most of the time, both people are out working and they both have to come home and there's things mm-hmm. to do. And it's, you got to find that system to work together, especially, you know, obviously um, in a marriage, you know, the, the two people come, they join together as one and you can spend so much time button heads and fighting over things instead of just like being an adult and having a conversation and saying like, hey, you know, let's let's work out some type of system where, you know, these are your duties and these are your duties. Like, you know, how we we do with um, the kitchen stuff where <laughs> where you cook. You say you cook I'll all the time, you later. but I, I grill some. We just haven't had stuff to grill When's lately. When's the last time? 
time you've grilled. Friday for the Beast Feast. I'll be doing the overnight brisket. We are in church. <laughs> you are lying. No, no, I'm not lying. I don't know the last time I grilled. It's been a minute since we had something. No, it was those hamburgers or what the other time. I say that I cook all the time. Yeah, you said it just a minute ago. Yeah, I ago. know I did. Yeah, but I do some grilling too. When we have stuff to grill, that's the... Uh-huh. You're jumping on the first part of the sentence, but uh-huh. you have to wait for the entire uh-huh. thing. Uh-huh. So Sorry, another I thing, the little words as, <laughs> as possible. The um, with the, the lat, so uh, the emotional aspect of just um, responding and reacting to things. Uh, <laughs> stop dwelling on it. Well, I can't. Well, my thing is. <laughs> I don't know, because uh, I'm weird, because I can just disconnect from something, and that's probably a terrible character flaw. But you do, you have to find the thing that you can replace it with. So it's not just stop dwelling on it. It's, okay, we're about to take a car ride for two hours to go on a road trip, and you can sit here and freak out over, are we going to get a flat tire? Are, how, is traffic going to be bad? What if, what if there's an accident? Well, what if we get in an accident? Well, a thing on anxiety because, like, I hear what you're saying, but you don't struggle with it. No. No. I, I'm not so, downplaying that. I'm, <laughs> I'm saying, saying, as you told me, you have to find the, the professional to handle stop the, anxiety. the cycle. <laughs> I am not the professional on anxiety. I'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> what, you, what you said, um, finding the thing to replace it with. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, so, and, and that's just going back to what we're supposed to be talking about with fathers. And there's just that huge aspect, um, like a good, so one of the things that he said and talked about was an involved father promotes growth and strength in a child and an absent father reduces it. And that, that's what I wanted to get to. So that's the, the problem with how it was in the 50s versus how it is now, where now it's just designed where everyone has to be working and we're all devoting all of our time. And it's almost like uh, Mitch had a good, a good way to say at one time, if the devil can't stop you from doing something, he'll get you to do so much that you can't focus on one thing. So now it's like the economy is, is this way and it's, you have to be working X amount of hours and you've got to be at work in X amount of hours just to try to make the bills meet. And then it's like, we still have to come home and find a way to raise the kids and teach the kids and do this and do that. And then it's, you've got the dads that just want to come home and not do anything with anybody. They just want to sit down, crack mm-hmm. open a beer and watch football or watch Netflix or whatever they want to watch and prop their feet up on the couch. And it's like, no, you, you still have duties as a father to be involved in leading your family and providing for your family and, it's not providing for your family is not just going out to a job and bringing home the bacon, bringing home money and putting a check on the table. Providing for your family that is providing so for <laughs> for all their for all their needs. It's like giving um, blind in this eyeball. Don't look at it. <laughs> I'm messing with you over the anxiety thing. Providing for everything, it's not, it's not just, because that is the bare minimum, I would say. I think you can agree with me. It's, it's literally just going to work and bringing home money and doing nothing else. But to truly provide for your family is to, to, to be there for your kids, to, to spend time with your kids, to, to teach them things, to teach them, uh, you know, um, things for life that they'll need to know how to do, like teaching them how to drive, teaching them how to handle a bully in I mean, school, teaching, you're teaching them how them to every second of the day have exactly teaching so them how you're to have them respect and all that stuff. Whether you're teaching them how to be an alcoholic, or you're teaching them how to talk to uh, a woman, or you're teaching them how a man should talk to you. I mean, you really don't have to focus on that. You need to come home and start teaching them. That is going to happen regardless. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not. I'm saying spent like it, it comes naturally by spending time with them, not yeah. like sitting them down and being like, "Okay, this is how you talk to a girl." Like, well, I mean, I'm sure there's a. I don't you know. I don't have. I don't have boys, so I don't know. About. You know, I guess you have that conversation, but you oh, know, like that. Did what your dad say was that true? Was he a bad dad? I don't know. I don't remember. Let's dish. Which is probably because it was he was so terrible. You probably have PTSD that, um, and you have blocked out your entire childhood memory. Is that I what think it's hilarious. The story that he brought up of Brandon giving the prayer request that he needed to stop smoking. You you hit that and then you blew right past it without providing any extra uh, uh, 
substance to that yeah. story. He which meant was, marijuana. Uh, I don't think he meant marijuana. We know marijuana. he, it's okay. It's uh, crack. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> but just like that, like, you know, and inv- you have to be involved. Um, and that's what, that's what gets the teaching. That's why you mm-hmm. see so many people and not like, saying that um, mothers don't play a huge role or they're not important, obviously, but... Well, the girls play with you the most. Oh, yeah. The girl is always looking for a dad, but that that's, like, you look at the... the I don't want to get crazy, but, like, statistically, like, the, the people that go out and commit so much crime came from broken homes that don't have dads. They didn't have mm-hmm. a fatherly role or even... Um, you know, I don't, I don't know the statistics on it, but you know, just like ultra hypersensitive men, um, that go off the deep end or off the rails, they were raised by a single mother. And, you know, I'm not again, dogging a single mom or anybody like, obviously she's doing the best she can, but it's just the, the, obviously by God's design, we're supposed to have both roles fulfilled within a home. You're supposed to have a loving mother and you're supposed to have a, a loving father that teaches you those things that, you know, the, the mom teaching you the nurturing aspect and then the father, you know, defending you and raising you up to be a good moral person in society. And it's just when you break up that aspect and you have, because a, a father doesn't have to abandon the family to not raise kids, as we've been saying, like you, a father that just comes home and does nothing, you may as well not be there. You have to be involved in the family's life. You have to be involved in your kid's life because like you said, like they're picking up, they're watching you for everything. You look at how the kids end up talking and their their personality gets shaped by your personality. It's obviously genetics play a huge role, but so does uh, your personality and things that they see. Like Riley, you know, she acts so much like you, obviously because of her genes and your personality coming out in her, but she also displays those aspects of me as well. And like, she'll start saying the things that I say or saying the things that you say. And that's just a trip in itself. (laughs) Um, But that's just the, the importance of a father is that you need um, both sides of that coin, the father and the mother to fulfill the house. But, you know, I, I think, Biblically, yeah, like you, you do need, you have to have that that man's role okay, so fulfilled. To absolutely, train wreck everything you just said. Yes. <laughs> um, what would be, what would be uh, two things? So the first thing is, I think it's important to say that because you are talking, you're discussing men right now like they have a two-year-old child or that they have, you know, two-year-old kid or that they are just become parents. You know, what about the parents that, uh, the dads that are, have 18-year-old kids, got 30-year-old kids, you know, and they're just now figuring all this out. You know, you, you're, you're, I'm not saying by fault, but I'm just saying you're discussing and harping like how to be, uh, a biblical man and father and everything right now, but you've got men that have adult kids mm-hmm. that they have been absent the whole time and are now trying to, you know, are now either listening to this and going, oh, okay, you know, or, well, first you can answer that question. <laughs> well, um, I think... It's never too late. It's never too late. Um, obviously. And I think a a really good thing, Elevation's Father Day sermon was actually spot on with that. Or what I would say my response is to that is the the training up a child in the way that they should go when they're older, they won't depart from it. Uh, They did a phenomenal uh, video on that, you know, a father and and a younger kid and then raising them up Mm -hmm. to the point that they get married. Mm -hmm. And then he has a grandchild. Um, But not everybody has that. Not everybody um, was raised in church or, you know, maybe they didn't come to God until an older age and their kids are already older. Um, And maybe you have those fathers that, uh, like the story that dad gave, where um, 
the guy abandoned, abandoned. His, son, uh, his son, and then the son found him way later in life. Mm. Uh, and luckily that, you know, the son had found Jesus and had a, had, a, had a relationship with Jesus and, you know, the way that that story went with the Holy Spirit and then seeing and then um, seeing the state of his father's house and, and the disarray and just um, calming down and the Holy Spirit calming him down and being able to meet. But obviously, yeah, you have those fathers where they have either older kids or they weren't in their kids' lives. And I think the problem with a lot of men would be that um, because of, of, of pride, I think that, that the whole thing gets boiled down to pride is that, oh, I may not do it. I, you know, I, I wasn't there. So yeah, it's too late, which obviously you can say, oh, well, it's never too late. Well, that doesn't stop. It's like, you know, saying, oh, don't think about it. It's just saying, oh, it's never too late, obviously but you can't help the time that you've already lost. But if you sit there and you only dwell on the time that you've lost and you don't realize like, hey, I can still work on picking up these pieces. I can still work now on being involved in my child's life. And maybe they're 25 years old and I wasn't there for the first 20 years and they've only just met me or maybe I've just met them now at 25. And it's like, you can still impart on them life lessons. You can still you know, come together and meet on that level and be like, hey, you know, I, I messed up, but let's work on this together and find out who we are now and, you know, do those things now together. It's not just, you know, only raising a small child up until they're older. Like, yeah, obviously, I, I, I hope, you know, I didn't mean to sound like only this group of fathers because obviously you do have the no, other no, group. I'm but just it's saying. Just, and I think a big part, too, is is you talked about on Mother's Day, well, your dad did, um, talking about... Uh, you know, you are the mother that they need. And then you and I talked about, okay, what if the mom is a cocaine addict and she, uh, the kids get, you know, maybe it wasn't, that's such a super gray area, but hear me out on this long ADHD thought process train. We're just going to ride it together. Um, you know, and maybe that child that had the mother that was addicted to co- cocaine. Um, I don't know why we keep using cocaine. <laughs> That's what we're known for here. Drug of choice, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, and abandons the kid and the child gets raised by, you know, an aunt or, you know, grandparents or even a family friend that was super close and they take the child. So, you know, maybe that was supposed to happen, you know, and the same thing with dads, maybe, do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you as a dad coming back and saying, if you're a dad and you have your child that's in the thirties and, um, you're realizing all these issues, (laughs) um, you know, everything that you messed up and that you did, I think it would be the a huge teaching point. I'm not going to say that it would make up for all the teaching points you miss, but you have no idea what you could probably teach your adult son by coming to him and dropping all your pride and saying, listen, I was absent. Um, I recognize I did this, 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 and I want you to learn from my mistakes. So here are all my mistakes from A to Z. Exactly. You know, I see that you have kids, um, you know, this is what I've done. And you never know, that may make a bigger impact. And I'm going to sound super crazy saying this, but it might make a bigger impact on his future life and then his kids than it would have been if you were just there when he was a kid. Mm-hmm. I don't know. No, that, that makes a sense. hot mess. No, it wasn't at all. <laughs> I so, mean, it went, um, um, Kelly commented the, you know, the humble and forgiveness thing, uh, dropping your Kelly. pride being, okay. um, Dropping, we're talking about, Mila just texted me. <laughs> um, it, yeah, the whole thing of, of dropping your pride, um, because obviously, you know, everybody's got different walks of life. And okay, maybe you're one of those people that have uh, abandoned your children. And that's a, where I was trying to <laughs> head Sorry. earlier was the, I think the thing with men 
is that because of our pride, we often won't start doing something because of fear of failing at it. And we'll get stuck just being stagnant Mm -hmm. and we won't do anything because we're too afraid of like, I'm trying to put myself in those shoes where it's like, okay, I wasn't here for my child's life and I left because I didn't know I could be, I didn't know how to be a dad. And you can literally, you know, you can literally just sit there for your entire life and stay broken and you can stay like, okay, well, you know, there's no point in, in trying now because they hate me and they don't want a relationship with me because I wasn't there and all they're going to see in me is, you know, just the, the dad that wasn't there. So, you know, I'm not even going to bother trying. And it's like, that's to me, that's the enemy still keeping that over you, keeping that bondage uh, um, the bondage on you and the the chains over you and keeping you locked down where you won't attempt to do anything. And it's it, it, obviously every child wants their parents. They want to be involved with their parents. They want their parents to love them. Even if they had bad parents or they have bad parents and maybe they have, you know, a, a good step parent. Well, not to get really graphic, but, but it's that's like, why like children that get sexually abused by their father still go back and see them after they're 18. Because they want they that want, relationship. Everybody. I yeah. mean, like he made the point. You, you, you know, every... And that on itself, to write off of that, that shows you exactly how much and going to girl dads because you're a girl dad that shows exactly how much you have an impact on your girls as a dad. Exactly. You, like that. Is, They're looking is, at everything and learning can, from everything. You can, you know, Google it. Um, as your dad says, what are the... Google machine. The Google machine. You, <laughs> you can go on there and look, and it's, it's crazy the numbers of uh, girls that go find their dad after they're, you know, legally not allowed to see them until they're 18 and they will go seek them out. I mean, well, the one story where the girl, um, what was it? She went back. It's, it's disgusting, but she went back to see the, the, her dad who had, uh, abused her mother and thus produced her and she went back to meet him and then he did it to her. That, yeah, that was the one, um, that was the one I told you about from yeah. the Mark Driscoll sermon so way back in the day. It is, you have no idea the impact that, as a girl dad, that you make. No, I mean. On, a, on, a, yeah, on your on, daughter. On all of them. The, the yeah. girls are looking for how to be treated, mm-hmm. and the sons are looking for how to treat. Um, so obviously, and like that, like, you know, not just sitting down and having conversations, but being present in the things that you do are what they're going to, um, what they're going to model their life after. I mean, I, I've read the story of the the father that had two sons, uh, and the father was an alcoholic. One son grew up and went on to have a successful career and, and bettered himself and did everything. The other son grew up to be an alcoholic. And mm-hmm. when you asked both of them, you know, what made you go down this path? I watched my dad, both of them, same mm-hmm. answer. I watched my dad. One decided to not break a generational curse and stay in it, and the yep. other decided to, you know, I'm, I'm not going to continue this, and I'm going to change something, and I'm sure it was a struggle. I'm sure it was a struggle. If it was a, something generation, generationally over that family, that's going to be hard to break, but that's the importance of it is just, you know, buckling down and deciding like, I- I'm not going to let this continue me, in my I'm too children's overweight. life. I'm too, I'm exactly. too fat to lose weight. No, you're not. No. You know, it's just the, the more overweight the, you are, the harder it is. The more gone you are, the harder it is. The more you've uh, had distance from your kids and you've got adult kids and you're trying to come back the harder it is, you know, and it, it will be it hard. Can happen. It, but it can happen. It you can, can lose weight, but you have to, you have to stay working at it. Yeah. You can't just give up like that. Like coming back into your kid's life mm-hmm. as they're an adult, however that may look in your situation coming into that. Yeah. It's going to be hard. Um, and that was the thing. Like, you know, you can get stuck just not even attempting to try it because mm-hmm. you're too afraid of failing. You're always going to be fat. Or you're, or I'm you're just, gonna. I'm just trying to break it down. Or you're, you'll have this idea, you know. Oh, maybe it's gonna go wrong, you know, and they're gonna hate me. And then the first time you meet them, and they it's just an absolute might. train wreck. They might, and it probably will be because they're still but harboring you don't go to the some gym of that for anger. One day, 
exactly. And then give you up. have to keep going. You can't just yeah. decide. Oh, that went. Ex- I see. Like that, that's why I didn't want to do this are because. You know, I knew that they were going to say that they hate me and I knew that it was going to be a nightmare. And so I'm just never going to know. Like, that's only going to compound their anger and their bitterness and their sense of, of lost and, loss and abandonment. Like, if they're already hurt over the fact that you weren't there and you come back into the picture and you want to come back in the picture. Hurt. And then you're mad that they're hurt yeah. because they lash out at you, and then you just completely disconnect again. Mm-hmm. You have now made them hurt worse mm-hmm. because even though they're lashing out at you through their hurt, from their hurt, mm-hmm. there's there's still that piece of them, in or there's still that piece that's inside of them that they're like, they still want to connect with the father. There's still something there. Mm-hmm. There's still something like they want to have that relationship with you. And okay, yeah, they're they're probably gonna lash out. Uh, in in some way and lash out in some kind of you know anger or bitterness, but you have to be uh, since this is for fa- the fathers and men like you you've got to be man enough to take it like that you've chin. got to take it on the chin you've got to drop your pride mm-hmm. even more you're already dropping your pride I'm sure and, and trying to humble yourself to come to them but if you get your feelings hurt because they lash at you you didn't drop your pride low enough you were still holding on to it with one hand well, you've got to completely drop it and realize okay. I, if I want this and I want to correct this, I've got to be that safe space. I can't get my feelings hurt just because they lashed out at me. You have to put yourself in their shoes and realize, like, this is this is your child that you unfortunately hurt. And while you're trying to make it better now, it's it's a process. It's like sanctification with Christianity. Like, it's it, it, it takes time. You don't just decide, hey, I'm going to quit smoking after 30 years and then mm-hmm. just throw the pack of cigarettes in the, in the trash and suddenly you can't smoke. Like, no, it's, it's going to gonna be some work. Well, um, I hope he doesn't kill me for talking about this. But um, that is, it's, it's kind of what your dad and I went through. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know, but for the first, for the first, like, what? four years of our marriage, we didn't really speak to them. Mm -mm. And he and I definitely (laughs) always fought. I mean, we couldn't text each other without. No. It was pretty bad. And I really hope he doesn't kill me. But um, it would be the same thing. We would, I always craved to have that relationship. You know, now I regret it because he's crazy. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I always craved to have a relationship because I always wanted I always wanted a really close uh, father-in-law and mother-in-law relationship. And you and I had talked. I mean, I'd cry and cry and cry. It, yeah, you, you made remember? her cry so many times. <laughs> you still do. <laughs> um, and I would, uh, I, was, I was just so distraught. But, um, you know, I'm not saying it's their fault at all. I mean, we all played a huge, mm-hmm. I'm not even getting into that. But um, it's like you just said, I cra- I really wanted to have that relationship. So I would try a little bit and I would reach out and he'd respond, you know, okay. But the minute that, <laughs> <laughs> the minute that I felt like they hated me or that he hated me or he was just, or he, you know, the minute that I felt uneasy ground or I wasn't very comfortable or I, he was mad at me or we'd get into a little bit of an argument, I was out. And we wouldn't talk to them for another six months or a year, you know? And I was, I would get, I can I say pissed on here? Well, you just did. <laughs> I would get really, really <laughs> mad. Um, <laughs> I would get really, really mad that he responded to me like that. Um, you know, after I tried, Really? <laughs> after after I tried so, so hard to reach out to him and to mend all of our us four's relationship and make us all, you know, one happy family. And then, you know, he would do something like that. You know, fine, be that way. You know, I'm out. And um, I can honestly say that... Uh, Really, (laughs) I can honestly say that um, when he's so going to kill me, I'm so done. Um, When he went and got his um, counseling degree, Mm. 
I think it changed him. It did change him. Um, and then when I would speak to him afterwards, it was kind of, I'm not gonna say it was a different person, but he was softer almost, you know, he's always been like, a soft, weak guy, but now he's still going to kill me. No, I'm kidding. Um, he, he, he received my hurt a lot better. And when he received my hurt a lot better and was more just non-reactive and just kind of let me go through the process of figuring out how to be close to them without feeling like I was second best or I was the mistake, or I was the black sheep, or they hated me being around you, or anything like that. As soon as I felt that the environment was okay, um, you know, it it changed everything, you know, and now we just get on each other's yeah. nerves constantly. But it, um, and then in turn, that changed me. You know, I started to let go of a lot of anger, um, a lot of bitterness, a lot of jealousy, um, you know, so you never know just by, like you said, you know, the, the father coming in for the older child and you just taking it a little bit, you know, just taking that, taking that, uh, <laughs> I'm your only daughter-in-law, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that we know of, um, <laughs> <laughs> taking, you know, taking that on the chin, um, you never know what impact that could do beyond saving y'all's relationship. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think it's, there's so much, so much, obviously, to unpack in that. And, it, and the, the, the thing with any kind of, um, growth or People healing. People are like Googling now why we didn't get on <laughs> The, the, the thing with, with growth and healing, like anything, how we are uh, like a fast food mindset society and we want everything to just happen immediately. Yeah. And we think, okay, there's, there's this distance here and we're going to have a conversation and just everybody's going to be like, mm -hmm. th this isn't a Hallmark movie. Um, you have to realize that you know, it's, you know, sometimes you're going to have the two steps forward and three steps back, and then you're going to take mm -hmm. two more forward and then maybe only one. And it's just that, that constant like thing before you finally get to the point of, of, you know, being healed. And I think that, you know, that it made me think of all the people that they're like, oh, you know, they see how you guys banter back and forth on, on this or, you know, on the comments. And they're like, oh, I, I love your relationship and, you know, this <laughs> and that, you know, and it's always, it, people always see the the after effects. We mm -hmm. see the highlights and it's like, oh, you know, I would love to have that kind of relationship with such and such person. person. And it's like, you, you don't see the years of mm -hmm. something that led up to that. And, you know, like the saying always goes, like, when you do what so. I've done, you can have what I've got. Yeah. And it's, they always, you know, it's, they, they see somebody that's like a billionaire or, or, or a millionaire and they're, you know, oh, I, I wish I had that or, you know, it must be nice. And it's like, you don't, you don't see, then obviously excluding someone that was just born into it, but somebody that like started their own business and worked their way up from nothing mm. to, you know, an extremely successful business. You don't see the, the, the year or more of them not taking a paycheck. And barely getting by. You don't see the the years of sleepless nights, and you know you don't see the the just getting everything from the ground level to where it is now. We just see the success, and we think mm -hmm. it was just overnight. And it's like no, like everything takes time. It goes in hand too. If you see great dads, you know, yeah, your your dad will say all the time, "You're a great dad," and you're a really great dad. But like I see the times where. Um, you get super frustrated or you're super annoyed and um, you still go play the dogopoly with the girls, you know, and you see on social media, if I post a video, you guys playing in the pool, but you know, you didn't see them literally drag you into the <laughs> pool and you're like, I really don't want to go swimming. I've gone swimming five days in a row. Yeah. But you know, you see all this stuff. Okay. This is a great dad. Um, but you don't see all the frustration that sometimes you deal with. 
with yeah. being. Uh, well, that's just that. That's the the nature of social media. Everybody always puts the good stuff on there, and then we get stuck in the mindset of you know somebody can watch that, and they're like, "Oh, I'm a terrible dad. Look at him. He's always playing with his kids." And it's like you don't see. When you're frustrated, the, when the frustrated, you upset. don't see the kids coming into the room at you know six in the morning, and you're like, I, I really just wanted a little bit more sleep, or you know, I try to wake up early and read the Bible, and it's like here they come right after you mm-hmm. open up your devotional, and then you're like, oh my gosh, seriously, like you couldn't have waited, you know, ten more minutes, and you know, and it's just everybody sees, and we always display our good stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, nobody knows the messes that go on behind all the other doors. And, yeah. and it's just that's the the unfortunate side of society now where it's everybody thinks somebody's just got it all going on and they don't realize, you know, and I think everybody's got something they're dealing with. Something has to be said, uh, you know, for single moms. And I don't know why I just thought about this, but it's it's – Single moms need to know you don't because I see it all the time. You know, I'm a mom and a dad. No, you're not. Um, (laughs) You're not. And that's not me trying to be rude because I was a single mom, you know, at one point, not for a super long time, but um, we won't go there. Uh, But it's you're 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 not a mom and dad. And I don't think God wants you to be a mom and a dad. No, he just that's wants why there's you to be two separate roles. He wants you to be a mom. And you know, it, it is super it is very unfortunate if you're a single mother. That's very unfortunate. And you know, my heart goes out to you because there's a lot of days when you'd be gone on storm for 2 weeks and I was doing nursing. I think I was doing home health at one point too, mm-hmm. not just hospital. So I'd have uh, uh, work weeks where I would be working two straight weeks and on call and you'd oh, be gone. Horrible. And so it felt like a single mom and it was nice just to be able to text you and just have, have a guy to talk to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like have a, an adult to talk to. And, um, you know, these single moms don't have that. And that's their life day in and day out. And they're constantly getting up wondering, um, you know, is my kid lonely? Because they're in after school uh, every single day. They go to grandma's on the weekend because I got to work two jobs because my mortgage is $3,500 a month because we live in St. Augustine. <laughs> and, you know, eggs are two fifty for four and I have to constantly work. And um, you can't help but be like, you know, I wish... You know, if you didn't want to get divorced, I can't, I wish that my husband was still here. Or if you wanted to get divorced because he was uh, a bad dude, you know, you wish that you, <laughs> why are you laughing? Because nothing. Because I'm restraining it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So graceful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm doing my best. You made me come on live. Okay. I'm working really hard. <laughs> um and so I think it is important to, you know, we need to stop pushing the agenda of, uh, oh, you're a single mom. You know, congrats. Happy Father's Day. No, no. Happy Mother's Day. And happy Mother's Day only. And that's probably going to, I already said it, so I'm going to say it again. That's going to piss a lot of people off. <laughs> you know, like, and I understand that. And they're going to go, well, you're happily married. I mean, sometimes I'm happily married. I'm kidding. <laughs> and we're done. Uh, I'm no, I'm kidding. And, um, you know, I'm not trying to make anyone upset and I'm not trying to belittle single moms. And this goes for single dads too. You are a father. If you're a single dad, you're a father. And that's it. You don't have to put an apron on. You know, they need you to be a dad. Mm-hmm. And I can promise you that, you know, pray with your kids every night. God knows what you're going through. He knows, he obviously knows you're a single mom or he obviously knows you're a single dad. Um, You know, I would even go as far as say, pray to find a spouse that you need and your kids need in their life. Um, And just accept, not just accept, that's really rude, but just really move forward in your role. You are not a mom and a dad. You are what you are, and that's it. And I promise you that if the kids recognize you being the role you're supposed to be, 
they will be just fine, you know, but that doesn't excuse. Now that doesn't excuse the the dads being like, well, she's the mom. So I can just go come home and sit on the couch. Like, no, if you're there, please be there. Um, but it's, you can, you can fully embrace being a mom. And, you know, if you know how to change your oil as a mom, great. Teach them how to change your oil. But, you know, don't, don't confuse those roles because, you know, boys that grow up in a single mom household, they're not going to understand, you know, they will figure it out. But with you being a good mom and being just a mom, what you're supposed to be and a good mom, they're going to find a good wife. Mm -hmm. I think too, um, either side you don't have to try to be like as a as a mother. Obviously, you can't be a father, and you shouldn't try to be a father. And as a as a father, don't try to be a mother. But I think that if you're doing your job correctly, and the other side is not there, I think that you can still put that wisdom in them mm-hmm. that they know what a good father would be if mm-hmm. you were there, and they Talk would know to your girls what a good mom. mother would be if Talk she to was your there. Girls, you know. You just, your single mom and just, you know, have discussions. Listen, when they get of age, you know, when they're five, you don't want to tell them about the horrible boyfriends you've had. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when they're in high school, you know, listen, talk to them. You know, if you're a single mom and you have a boy, um, listen, this is the kind of men that, that I mean, don't be, I'm not a counselor, but don't be um, trash talk, you know, don't yeah. be, but... Uh, I don't know. You I'm can't. Get well, like that. <laughs> well, you can't make your kids, and we'll end in a minute since we're going way over. But you can't make your kids your soapbox for your trauma. Right. You can't sit there and like that. Like, okay, the father left, so now all you're going to do is mm-hmm. tell your son how horrible men are and all this. Then you're you're basically just telling your son that you don't really like him because he's a man, and then it's going to make him grow up with all sorts of issues. Same goes for men. They can't, you know, sit there and just badmouth the women to their daughter or even to their son. It, you can't, you, yeah. you have to be an adult. And if, if you need to vent about your problems and maybe you can't afford a counselor, find a good friend, an adult friend that you can talk to. Also read the Bible. Well, that obviously, <laughs> but you can't, your, your children, you need to maintain their innocence. Yeah. You can't just dump everything on them because they have no idea what you're talking about. And now you're just confusing them and making them have problems Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Um, But like that, like knowing your role, you know, the, 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 the mother not being a father and the father not being a mother. I remember a while ago seeing a a picture that was taking or a dad, I think he was a single dad too. I don't know, but he was taking his daughters to go see the Barbie movie and he he dressed dressed up. up in like a dress and everything for his girls. Like, my dad no, I, never I don't did that. think you're I'll dressing up. I'll, I'll just uh, <laughs> my since dad you've already never did thrown that. some words out. I, I don't think <laughs> you're dressing up for your girls. I think you're letting your closet stuff out, if you will, um, to kind of keep it somewhat PG. Uh, um, as a man, there's nothing in me. The girls have played, you know, dress up games and and their little fashion shows. And I mean, they've done your they hair. Want me to get well? That's something. But else. you're not going in public. But I'm not going. I have never put on a dress on. Yeah. or women's clothes or anything. Yeah. If they want to put a, a scrunchie in my hair but because they want to play spa, spa day or something, of course he was. They were. They Society were, doesn't want men to be dad. men anymore. But you got to know your role. And, mm. and a man is not putting on a dress. Mm. If you want to take your girls to go see Barbie, whatever, they're your children. But you putting on a dress is not. Supporting them. Supporting them in any way. That's just yeah. making them think it's okay for men to wear a dress. Yeah. And it's not. It's never going to be. A man is a man is a man, and a woman is a woman. That the God made the two different for a very specific reason. I mean, if we cease and desist those type of relationships, the human population is going to end. I mean, you can make a baby in a jar all you want, but I can tell you right now... You you can't. I mean, it's it, it, it so will canceled. just <laughs> die out. Um, so yeah, with right. that, we'll, uh, no, we've gone we've gone way over. Uh, it's well over in an hour an hour now. Um, 
So yeah, uh, 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 <laughs> we have the Beast yeah. Feast coming up this Friday again. What is it? The twenty second. I already closed it out. Yeah, it's this 22nd. Friday. I'm gonna um, go on a limb. Obviously, women aren't invited. Please mm-hmm. don't show up if you're a woman. No, don't. It, it is a this is a um, man event. Um, but we will have if this to is go a, plates. Uh, yeah. If yeah. there's anything left, so oh. I'm sure there will be. So I mean, I I probably hope your dad doesn't get mad at me saying this, but if barbecue's not your strong suit, don't let that hold you back from coming. No. Like if you don't have, if you can't make a thing, and I'm not trying to insult anyone, but if it's just too expensive, I mean, everything is very expensive right now. Even if um, you don't know how to cook something, go uh, grab a rotisserie chicken from Publix. Or I don't just know. don't. Just, just show come. up. Just yeah. come hang out. So, That's the whole point of the event is men just yeah. getting together and, and fellowshipping. Uh, I think that's extremely important. Men mm-hmm. are are very important. Uh, Your dad's like telling us to wrap it up. In every... <laughs> no, we just... Because we just said we were ending soon. You have to remember, those are like a minute behind. Oh. Um, but yeah, just... It, 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 men are important in their their family, in their wife's, wife's life, wife, single life. Uh, their children's life, lives, um, and they're very important within the church. <laughs> Welcome to family church. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple lives. Hey, you know, the internet will clip up anything, and now with AI, there's no telling. Uh, but yeah, the Beast Feast, <laughs> if you're a man, just just come. You don't If you don't want to cook something, if you can't cook, it doesn't matter. I know there's plenty of guys that, that don't know how to grill um, or, 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 you know, smoke meats for If your gender that stuff. was assigned at birth is male... Yeah, I've already heard the. It's, you're welcome. To people come. making jokes. Oh, I'm gonna identify as a man so I can show up. Hey, we I'm don't do that here. Yeah, you know what? We don't do that here. You can go to the altar Julie, when we're we in finish trouble. this. <laughs> Julie and I are in trouble. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, just just come and just come and hang out. It's important, I think, for men to get together, especially at a, at a church event like that. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm really excited um, because I think that there needs to be a massive shift. Mm-hmm. There has got to be a massive shift in uh, men. Uh, I think we are getting dangerously close to. Well, so I'm saying, like Rome literally it, fell it, when this getting, type of thing happened. And I think that a lot of women, and again, we've already said this, but a lot of women that start to be more assertive and more dominant and more independent, you know, a lot of the times it's because they have to, mm-hmm. because the type of men that are getting turned out are just these. You know, I I don't necessarily need um, a uh, super, and I, I mean this by no, I'm not trying to offend anyone that's like this because we all have different personalities. We all have different interests and there's nothing wrong with what I'm saying, but America paints the manly man um, as, uh, you know, a guy that drives a truck, he hunts, he fishes, and if you don't do any of those things, you are not a manly man. Um, that those hobbies don't necessarily attract me. I don't really want a guy that hunts or, um, you know, I don't, I could care less about fishing. Um, but I think you're incredibly manly without doing all those things. Cause I think there's more than a man, more to a man than his hobbies. Oh yeah. But, um, you know, I'm going to go on for like an hour. <laughs> you just keep going. No, it's, it's, there's it's, a time limit. It's yeah. So I think that's super important. Um, and uh, you don't have to be, you know, hunting and fishing and listening to country. No, there's nothing wrong with those things, but you don't have to be like that to establish dominance and to be a, ma- a biblical man um, at all. No, that's not, my ADHD train went this way, so I don't know. No, no, you're right. It, there's, you know, there's to me the 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 type of people that think you have to do that. Yeah. Or you're not a man. I mean, obviously, there's nothing wrong with and, and knowing my, how to put food on the table if if you weren't able to go out and buy it. Obviously, that's a great skill to have. Some men that I have to do that, but I have met that are like that that I've had a relationship with. Some of them, not gonna say all of them, but some of them. Um, have been mental and emotional train wrecks mm-hmm. and miserable to be around because for some reason they think that because they do those things, they can't talk about their feelings. And I don't mean like sitting down like a woman talking about your feelings. I'm talking about being a man and saying, 
you know. I think being a, they think being a man is not having feelings. Yeah. Uh, and, and just burying everything. Um, and and that's not the case. I mean, there's a time and a place for yeah. everything. You can't be ruled by your emotions, but you also can't ignore the fact that you have them. Jesus also had emotions, and he's mm-hmm. God. So I think God he gave displayed all of them the, yeah, in he the did. Bible, right? He did. He displayed yeah. all of them, yes. Um, yeah, so it, it's it's pointless to act like, you know, you don't have emotions or anything like that. Uh, but, yeah, so men, the Beast Feast is this is this uh, Saturday. I forgot the day for a minute. 5, 5 p.m. And Sunday, uh, it come, come, or come early. Church is at 10 Um I'm up to bat again this week because I'm slowly kicking him out of his spot. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but no, I, I have, um, with everything that's lining up and all we've been talking about uh, in staff and talking mm-hmm. to dad behind the scenes and everything, I, I believe that this is a really timely message um, for everyone, especially for this church and where this church about? is headed. Things. No, uh, if you want to, since you're on the family room and you stayed much longer than normal. Oh my gosh. Um, what? You're gaslighting me. <laughs> uh, my Lord. Um, I am talking about the call of Abraham, Genesis 12 um, and Hebrews 11 is what my... You sure? De- yeah, I had to think. <laughs> There's so much, and it's, oh, man, there's, there's so, I'm having, whatever. Uh, no, I, I really think it's a very timely message, um, and I think it's, I think it's, it's really important for, for this house to hear, and I'm extremely excited about it. Um, I think it's going to be great. I think we're going to have a great, a great time. It's going to be and, great. And uh, I think when it's, it's done, Sunday. we'll be able to say goodbye to yesterday and be able to move forward I, into I don't the think, future. I, th- I think that everybody should say a prayer. Um, All for the time. your dad with that <laughs> song. Um, just a quick little prayer. You can do it now. You can do it tomorrow. You, you should can do pray it without s- ceasing. S- I would suggest It'll be fine. praying without ceasing for Sunday morning. Um, All right. I thought you were still going. <laughs> with that, that is this wonderful Wednesday on Family Room. Um, again... <laughs> We actually, with that, not just praying about Sunday, pray for us uh, for the rest of the week. Again, if you missed it at the beginning, the announcement, oh. we're having all the sound upgrades happen uh, tomorrow and Friday. Right now, literally, these two microphones are the only thing connected into our system. So pray for us. Uh, in, I, I have full faith and, and trust that everything will go just swimmingly. And we won't get our hackles raised. I don't want to put a lot of details, but if everyone's still watching, I hope they are. If if an anonymous prayer for a family, um, for a wife and son having to navigate the future yes. of their family. Yes. Uh, um, yeah. No, that is, just we'll to leave give her it. Strength and just uh, a, a, it. Yeah, a wife, a wife and a son navigating um, something very unfortunate. Obviously, and um, just just say a prayer for them, and you know we're believing. God has a plan for everything, and He there's there's always a plan, no matter what you're going through or any. Obviously, yes, and the other families, everyone involved. Um, And the the beauty of the Holy Spirit is you don't have to know all the details because He does, and He will say the prayer for you. Um, But yeah, Sunday show up. We're preaching on we. I'm preaching on um, Abraham, and uh, I think it's going to be a great message. And um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see it. 10 a.m. We will see you Sunday. So It'll, be It'll, be great. Great. It'll be great. It'll be great. It'll be great. You guys have a great <laughs> rest of the night. We love you. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.